हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सह नवतु सह नौ भुनक् सह वीर करवाहस्वी नवतीतमस्तुमाषा वह ओ शांति 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 श्री गीताध्यान थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायण स्वयं व्यास नुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदा भगवदीते भगवेशिनी नमोस्तु ते व्यास विशाल बुद्धे उल्लार विंदायत पत्र नेत्र भारत तैल पूर्ण प्रज्वाल ज्ञानमय प्रदीप प्रपन्न पारिजाताय स्त्रोत्र वेत्रकपाण ज्ञान मुद्रा कृष्णाय गीतामृतदुहे नम सर्वोपनिषदो गाओ दोग्दा गोपाल नंदन पार्थ वत्सुदीर्भोक्ता दुग्ध गीतामृत महत वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु भीष्मद्रोणकटा जयध्रत जला गांधार नीलोत्पला शल्यग्राहवती कृपेण वहनी कर्णेन वेलाकुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोर मकरा दुर्योधनावर्ति सोतीर्णा खलु पांडवैरणनदी कैवर्तक केशव पाराशर्यवच सरोज ममल गीतागंडोत्कट नाख्यानकसर हरिक संबोधना बोधि लोके सज्जन षटदैरहर पेपीयम मुदा भूयाद भारत पंकज कलिमल प्रध्वंसी नेयसे मूक कौति वाचा पंगु लंघयते गिरी यकृपातमह वंदे परमानंदमाधव यं ब्रह्मेन्द्रुद्रमरुत स्तुन्वती दिव्यस्तव वेद सांग पद क्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानावस्थित तेन मनसा पश्यती यं योगिनो यम न विदुसुरा सुरगण देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम हरिओं सो ऐम इन अ न्यू प्लेस ऐम इन डेली 
so my oh my mother is correcting me you know she says i am not in a new place i am in a i am in a old place she says puranik uh, puranik sindraprastha <laughs> chetra not only it is sindraprastha puranik chetram it's also my place of birth my home where i was born <laughs> so okay so hari om <clears throat> so what we have seen is that bhagwan taught us the following truths um doing the quick revision of last satsang one the material creation or matter as also the self or the spirit are both beginningless anadi and matter is beginningless because it preceded time and time is born out of matter spirit is beginningless because it preceded even the matter and matter comes out of the spirit all modifications and qualities are born of the prakriti or the matter <clears throat> and bhagwan said prakriti is said to be the cause for the production of the effect and the cause and purusha is said to be the cause for the experience of sukha and dukha pleasure and pain <clears throat> seated in prakriti purusha or the self experiences qualities that are born out of prakriti and attachment to these qualities is the cause for multiple births in various kinds of wombs the gunas the attachment to the gunas and then bhagwan said that the self is called the upadrashta or the spectator anumanta the approver the permitter bharta the supporter bhokta the experiencer maheshwaraha the great lord and paramatma the supreme self and one who understands the purusha in this manner thus and prakriti with the qualities or the gunas is not born again whatever may be their living condition so how does one get to this state of understanding the kshetra and the kshetragya the purusha and the prakriti bhagwan had recommended dhyanena the yoga of dhyana the yoga of meditation sankhya yogena the yoga of knowledge karma yogena karma yoga and then he said those who are not able to find time or for any other reason not able to do any of these shrutvan yebhya upasate worship upasate or worship of what has been heard from others and of course others means those who are learned the gurus in the remaining verses of this chapter bhagwan makes some proclamations like declarations on the benefits accrued from leading a balanced spiritual life a life that is focused on understanding the vibhaga understanding the differentiation the differences between the prakriti and the purusha understanding the prakriti with, with its qualities and the purusha or the kshetra as explained by bhagwan we will see those verses and because they are proclamations we won't go through too much of time uh, with examples and all bhagwan himself gives examples so we should be able to go through the eight odd verses that we have to cover today fairly quickly let's start with verse 26 yavat sanjayate kinchit yavat sanjayate kinchit satvam stavar jangamam satvam stavar jangamam kshetra kshetragnya samyogat kshetra kshetragnya samyogat tad vidhi bharat arshabha tad vidhi bharat arshabha yavat sanjayate kinchit satvam stavar jangamam kshetra kshetragnya samyoga tad vidhi bharat arshabha yavat whenever kinchit any satvam being 
ஸ்தாவரம் யா ஜங்கமம் ஸ்தாவர ஸ்டேஷனரி ஜங்கமம் மூவிங் வெதர் வென் எவர் எனி பீயிங் ஸ்டேஷனரி ஆர் மூவிங் சஞ்சாயத்தே இஸ் பார்ன் Bhagavan says, Vidhi, no. Vidhi, tad. Vidhi, tad, no, that. Some yoga, from the union of, this birth comes from the union of Kshetra, the field, Kshetra Gya, the knower of the field. O Bharatar Shabha, O best of Bharatas. Whenever any being stationary or moving is born, know that it is from the union of the field and the knower of the field o best of bharatas see the entire world of objects and beings everything that we see in creation all of creation both inert matter as well as conscious beings both the insentient as well as the sentient all of it put together arise from the association of the kshetra and the kshetragya now this combination of matter and spirit is not an accomplished union it is just or but only we can say it is a mutual superimposition the insentient kshetra appears sentient due to it being superimposed upon the kshetra gya and the immovable kshetra gya appears to be born to be growing and to also die due to its identification with the kshetra this superimposition identification is what gives us this appearance everything however is born as a compound of this kshetra kshetra gya nothing can happen and never does it happen in separateness of the kshetra and kshetra gya that is what bhagwan is proclaiming in this verse and then he continues samam sarveshu bhuteshu samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishtantam parameshwaram tishtantam parameshwaram vinashyat svavinashyantam vinashyat svavinashyantam yap pashyati sa pashyati yap pashyati sa pashyati samam sarveshu bhuteshu ீக்வலி சர்வேஷு bhuteshu in all beings sarveshu in all bhuteshu beings avinashyantam avinashyantam the unperishing something that does not get destroyed vinashyat sva among the perishing avinashyantam among the vinashyatva the unperishing among those that are perishing that person ya yeah, pashyati that person is who who sees so one who sees is one who sees all of this is the one who sees who actually sees so you can contrarily say others are blind so in life unless we are able to see these aspects we are blind to the reality and what is this bhagwan says one who sees the supreme lord existing equally in all beings the unperishing reality among the perishing is the one who sees even though these bodies are subject to destruction the supreme self is indestructible and existing as the supreme lord in all bodies so even though it exists in all bodies by itself it is indestructible it's like saying that the light may get fused the tube light that i have put here today may get fused but electricity itself is still there 
just the bulb getting fused does not destroy the electricity in itself similarly when the body gets destroyed the spirit continues to be continues to remain indestructible on the indestructible screen of consciousness like we had seen you know last satsang i think i had shared this example of the cinema screen so you have this blast that is happening there a bomb exploding nothing happens to the screen similarly on this indestructible screen of consciousness the universe the beings everything all that is part of creation appeared and disappeared that cycle continues and this paramatman is completely unaffected unmodified unchanged by all of this appearance disappearance of anything that is part of this phenomenon and one who sees bhagwan says in this manner is the true seer and he further continues tamam pashyan hi sarvatra tamam pashyan hi sarvatra samavasthitam ishwaram samavasthitam ishwaram nahinasyaatmanaatmanam nahinasyaatmanaatmanam tato yati param gatim tato yati param gatim samam pashyan hi sarvatra samavasthitam ishwaram nahinasyaatmanaatmanam tato yati param gatim he indeed bhagwan says indeed pashyan who sees samam the same ishwaram lord the same lord sarvatra everywhere samav samavasthitam equally dwelling hinasti na hinasti does not destroy or hinasti na destroys not atmanam the self atmanat by the self and tatah therefore yati goes to param the highest gatim goal indeed one who sees the same lord everywhere dwelling equally destroys not the self by the self and therefore goes to the highest goal matte matte so what does this mean when one sees the supreme lord dwelling equally everywhere in all beings in everything all objects and beings wherever we look we see the vibhuti of bhagwan wherever we see wherever we turn our eyes to we see bhagwan we saw in the vibhuti yoga right and sees the kshetragya in all of the shapes everything in all the fields see bhagwan started this um uh, this chapter like that right that i am the kshetragya in all the kshetras so one who sees in this manner what do you see you see bhagwan everywhere you see bhagwan in all aspects of creation and when one sees bhagwan in all aspects of creation you can't but love every single aspect of creation there is no way that you cannot on the contrary if you do not see this kshetram in all the kshetra you see only kshetra in all the kshetras you see only the physical bodies you perceive only the physical bodies and each one of them being dissimilar the self itself being dissimilar in every place then what happens when you do that then one views by virtue of viewing only the bodies one does not give that amount of let's say regard and respect let's say the empathy that is required to the other existences to the other parts of creation and when that happens this person destroys the creation the self the kshetragya which is there in the rest of the kshetra so as much as kshetragya is there in this kshetra which is my physical body kshetragya is there in all the physical aspects of creation and when you don't see bhagwan in all aspects of creation you tend to destroy the other aspects of creation and there in that sense destroys the self by the self 
That is what Bhagavan is saying here. So, Bhagavan is saying that observing everything that we see as the Kshetragya gives us that sense of seeing Bhagavan everywhere. And when that happens, this person does not destroy the self by the self. And then he continues. Prakritya Ivacha Karmani. Prakritya Ivacha Karmani. Kriyamana ni Sarvashaha. Kriyamana ni Sarvashaha. Yapashyati Tatmanam. Yapashyati Tatmanam. Akartaram Sapashyati. Akartaram Sapashyati. Prakritya Ivacha Karmani. Priyamana ni Sarvashaha. Yapashyati Tatmanam. Akartaram Sapashyati. Sir, Pashyati, one who sees Sarvashaha, all Karmani actions, Kriyamanani being performed. One who sees all actions being performed. Prakriti, Prakrityaiva, by Prakriti alone. And Cha, Tatha, also Atmanam, the self. Akartaram, actionless, as actionless. Yaha Pashyati is who sees. One who sees that all actions are performed by Prakriti alone. And likewise, the self is actionless. Meaning, the self is not the doer. Is the one who sees. So here again, Bhagavan is saying that if you are to the contrary, then you are blind to reality. It is important to see that it is the Prakriti that is doing everything. And indeed, the Purusha is actionless. Non-doer, as the non-doer. Bhagavan had said this in verse 20 of this chapter, where he said that Prakriti is said to be the cause for the production of the effect and the cause. He had said that. Recognizing that, as such, perceiving that, all these actions are performed by Prakriti. And also that Purusha is a non-doer. Such a person is a true seer. It's like the heat and light are inherent in the sun. Without heat and light, the sun is non-existent. They are inherent. Even so, Prakriti is inherent in Purusha. As much as heat and light are part of the sun, Prakriti is part of the Purusha. However, Brahman or Purusha does not undergo any modification because of this, on this account. As much as the sun does not go, undergo any modification just because of the heat and light. A little bit reduction in the heat, the, there is an intense, immense science has discovered fluctuation in heat and light aspects of the sun. There are big blasts that continuously, continually take place in that star. But that increase in temperature, decrease in temperature, more light or less light, more heat and less heat doesn't impact the sun in any way. It is what it is. Similarly, the Atman is actionless. While the body is seemingly his, but and is full of, the body is also full of activities. Everything is happening in the body consistently, continuously, all the time. But the Atman itself is actionless. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa had said, and I quote, I adore him as Brahman, who is all awareness, unaffected by activities, such as creation, preservation and destruction. I adore her as Shakti or Maya, who carries on all these activities regularly in the proximity of the actionless Brahman. Unquote. And Bhagavan continues. Yada Bhuta Pritak Bhavam. Yada Bhuta Pritak Bhavam. E Kastamanu Pashyati. E Kastamanu Pashyati. Tata Eva Chavistaram. Tata Eva Chavistaram. 
सेंटर्ड इन वन when one sees the entire creation as centered in one and cha vistaram spreading forth tatha from that eva alone tada then sampadyate attains brahman the supreme so when one sees the whole variety the entire creation of beings and objects as resting in one as centered in one that one supreme in the one and then spreading forth from it alone then one attains brahman prakriti bhagwan is saying is the root for all the variety and all the variety spreads forth from prakriti and both the prakriti as well as the variety are centered based in the one purusha and the knower of this attains brahman and then he continues anaditvan nirgunatvat anaditvan nirgunatvat paramatmayam avyayah paramatmayam avyayah sharirastopi kaunteya sharirastopi kaunteya nakaroti na lip उटिंगीस अव्यय इंपेरिशबल परमात्म सुप्रीम से शरीरस्थलिंग इन दिस् बॉडी न नॉट करोति एक्ट्स न नॉर् लिप्यते इज टेटेड ओ कौंतेय बीइंग विदउट बिगिनिंग एंड बीइंग डिवॉइड ऑफ क्वालिटी दिस् इंपेरिशबल सुप्रीम से Though dwelling within the body, though dwelling in the body, neither acts nor is tainted. So the kshetra gya is everywhere in all of in each and every kshetra, in each and every individual field, and in the cumulative field as the supreme self. But while it is there, it neither acts nor is is it tainted. Bhagwan first explains the indestructible and incomprehensible. aspect of the kshetra gya without beginning with devoid of qualities and imperishable destruction happens in two two ways or in two aspects one is when the substance itself is no longer there something that is there or was there is no longer there and the other is when whatever qualities the substance had those are gone it used to have those qualities but it is not there anymore the lack of existence of the substance or the dharmi is one way to get destroyed or losing the qualities or dharma of the substance is another way to get destroyed for example a flower a flower may jaise kehte hain na murja gaya what is it called in um withers flower withers it withers and uh, it just goes away it just ceases to be just falls and vanishes merges into the dust that is disappearance of the substance and when the flower fades in color 
or loses its perfume, then the flower itself is there, but it loses its properties. And in that sense, it is destroyed. And Bhagwan says that the Supreme Self is Anaditvan, without a beginning. It is not born. And anything that is not born, that substance, whatever is not born, how can it, the substance go away? And then Bhagwan says the Supreme Self is Nirgunatva. It does, it's devoid of qualities or properties. Anything doesn't have any quality by itself. How can the quality go away? In that sense, the Supreme Self is indestructible. Dwelling in the body, it neither acts nor it is tainted. It's like the moon. You know, you see the moon, it appears to be in the sky. And when I say sky, I'm talking about the atmosphere. So the moon appears. When we look up there, it appears to be in the atmosphere. It's actually not. It is beyond atmosphere. It is in the space. Also, when the clouds within the atmosphere are moving, it appears that the moon is moving. But those clouds have no impact on the movement of the moon by itself. And the movement that you see in the moon because of the clouds is actually false. It's not even there. That movement is not even there. Similarly, the Kshetragya appears to be acting because it is based in the Prakriti or it appears to be based in the Prakriti or the Prakriti is actually based on it. It is the, it upholds the Prakriti. But it is untouched. It does not act. Just like the moon is untouched by the clouds. And Bhagavan now gives two examples in the next two verses. We will go through them uh, together. Verse 32 and 33. Yatha sarvagatam saukshmyad. Yatha sarvagatam saukshmyad. Akasham no palipyate. Akasham no palipyate. Sarvatravastito dehe. Sarvatravastito dehe. Tatatma no palipyate. Tatatma no palipyate. Yata prakasha yati kaha. Yata prakash yatya kaha. Krishnam lokam imam ravihi. Krishnam lokam imam ravihi. Shetram shetri tata krishnam. Shetram shetri tata krishnam. Prakasha yati bharata. Prakasha yati bharata. Yata sarvagatam saukshmyad akasham no palipyate sarvatravastito dehe tatatma no palipyate yata prakasha yati kaha krishnam lokam imam ravihi shetram shetri tata krishnam prakasha yati bharata so yata just as Sarvagatam, the all-pervading, Akasham space, Nopalipyate is not tainted. Saukshmyad, because of its subtlety. Tatha, so too. Atma, the self. Avastitaha. Avastitaha means it is established. Sarvataha, in all dehe bodies. No palipyate, but is not tainted. As the all-pervading ether or space is not tainted because of its subtlety, so too the self established in the body is not tainted. And Bhagavan continues, Yatha just as Ekaha, one, Ravihi, the sun, Ekaha, Imam Ravihi, uh, or just as yatha imam ekaha ravi, just as this one sun, single sun, prakashayat, prakashayat illumines krishnam lokam, the entire krishnam, the entire lokam, the world, entire world, tatha, so too, kshetri, the lord of the field. Prakashayati illumines 
Krishnam, the whole Kshetram, the field. Bharata, O oh Bharata. So Bhagwan says, gives two examples. As the all-pervading space or ether is not tainted because of its subtlety, so too the self established in the body is not tainted. And just as this one single sun illumines the entire world, Loka, O Bharata, so too the Lord of the field illumines the entire field, the whole field. Just as the space which is all-pervading is unaffected or untouched, it is present everywhere. You know, in a small little keyhole, when we were coming into this house, you put the key into the keyhole, space is there. Space is there in this room. Space is there in the large hall. Space is there in, uh, you know, in a playground. And space is there in this entire atmosphere. And even beyond the atmosphere, space is there. So the space is all pervading. It is everywhere. In every single upadhi that you see, the space is there. All around. But it does not acquire the nature of any of this material aspect that it occupies. Because it is in the keyhole, it doesn't become the keyhole or the key for that matter. Because it is in the room, it does not become the room. Because if I put it in the small uh, cuboid, it doesn't acquire the shape of a cuboid. So even though it is there, it is not, it is untouched by any of this. Why? Because of its subtlety, Bhagavan says. Sukshmatyad. Because of the asangha swabhava. It does not associate itself. It is so subtle that it is not touched. It is completely untouched by the gross aspects. In the same way, the Atma, which is the subtlest, the subtlest is the Atma, is always ever untouched. While the first example that Bhagavan gave, the space example, it pertained to Sarvagatam, everywhere. What is all around, everywhere. The second one is about the single one, the single sun. Just as this one sun illuminates the entire universe, the entire realm of this manifold creation, the field, the kshetra, the kshetram, all of this, the kritsnam kshetram, the entire kshetra is illumined by the lord of the field, the kshetri. The lord of the field, kshetri, is nothing but the kshetra. Yeah. So while the sunlight, you know, falls equally on everything, you know, whether it is um, the uh, Ganges that is flowing in the Himalayas or the Ganges that is flowing in the uh, say let's say Banaras or the Yamuna that's flowing in the Himalayas and the Yamuna that's flowing here in Delhi. Now in the Himalayas it's absolutely crystal clear water. Here once it gets to the plain because of the human beings usage it becomes dirty. Meili ho jati hai, right? Like Ganga. So even then whether it is in the clean Ganga or in the polluted Ganga, wherever whether it is in the Himalayas or in the plains, whether it is in the clean or in the polluted, whatever it may be, wherever it may be, you know, the merits or the demerits, the location of where this river is does not affect the sunlight at all. And it's not as if the sunlight itself becomes cleaner or dirtier based on where it falls. The sunlight is exactly the same wherever it may be. In the same way, the Paramatman shines in the hearts of all beings. The purity within the heart of a saint does not increase the glory of the Paramatman. And as such, the impurity in the heart of a wicked person does not in any way decrease the luminosity of the Lord, of Bhagwan, of the Kshetra. It remains completely unaffected, untouched, untainted. Whether one uses a lamp to read a holy book like Bhagavad Gita or whether one uses the same lamp to count black money, let's say, whatever it may be, the lamp remains the lamp. In the same way, the drik is untouched by the drishya. What is enabling the what is to be seen, what can be seen is untouched by what is actually seen. 
and the kshetragya is untouched by the kshetra and finally now bhagwan concludes this chapter by giving a doctrine of the field and the knower of the field let's go through the doctrine kshetra kshetragya yorevam kshetra kshetragya yorevam antaram jnana chakshusha antaram jnana chakshusha bhuta prakriti moksham cha bhuta prakriti moksham cha ye viduryanti te param ye viduryanti te param kshetra kshetra gnayo revam antaram jnana chakshusha bhuta prakriti moksham cha ye viduryanti te param yah ye dos hu evam das viduhu discern no jnana <clears throat> chakshusha with the eye of knowledge antaram the difference kshetra kshetra gyor the between the field and the knower of the field cha and bhuta prakriti moksham the means of liberation from this manifold prakriti de te de yanti attain param supreme those who thus discern with the eye of knowledge the difference between the field or kshetra or the body and the knower of the field or the knower of the body which is the kshetragya and also the means of liberation from the manifold prakriti they attain the supreme discerning the difference between the kshetra and the kshetragya that is the chapter right kshetra kshetragya vibhaga yoga that is one and the second thing is knowing the means of liberation from prakriti that is two this is our sadhana for this chapter okay now you will wonder that we had already identified sadhana okay and they were but those sadhanas were chosen based on the state of life we are in based on the um you know the situation the characteristics the inclinations that we have if we can do meditation we do meditation if we want to study we do uh, sankhya yoga if we are tuned to karma yoga we do karma yoga with focus on the higher ideal and if we can't do anything we listen to others who the gurus who know and follow that with devotion so that those were sadhanas which were customized sadhanas based on our state of progress our state of learning our state of spiritual growth and also our inclinations this is sadhana for all for everyone for all of us and what is it yanti te param so this is sadhana for all of those who wish to attain the supreme and this has four elements evam thus the manner in which it has been explained in this chapter then jnana chakshusha with this eye of knowledge so once we go through and study what the way it has been explained we get that knowledge that i that vision that comes from knowledge with that jnana chakshusha antaram kshetra kshetra gyo the difference between the field and the knower of the field and bhuta prakriti moksham the means of liberation from prakriti so the means of liberation from prakriti are nothing but the 20 attributes that bhagwan you know had talked about the attributes of the mind and intellect the moral attitudes the ethical standards the principles that one must follow in order to understand the kshetragya verses 7 to 11 when we know that we know the means of them as the means of liberation so this is the sadhana for all of us with the eye of knowledge in the manner that has been explained understanding the difference between the kshetra and the kshetragya and also understanding the 20 means of liberation from 
this prakriti it is difficult it's not easy it is it is actually extremely extremely difficult it is very very difficult but we have to keep practicing we have to keep doing we have to keep going back and back again and again and again in fact i would say we should go through this chapter multiple times it is we come to the conclusion actually of one of the most as they say you know what has been made out to be the one of the toughest chapters it is difficult it is a tough chapter uh, but it's also been made out because in this chapter you will find a lot of dissonance in terms of various schools of philosophies in terms of how they explain what bhagwan has taught so when you say evam das this is how you understand what is that das this eye of knowledge varies based on individuals intellectual capabilities and intellectual accomplishments so you will find various schools of thoughts saying it in various ways so unless we go through it again and again we won't know what to follow so it is important that we follow this repeatedly multiple times and then stick to one thing that resonates with our belief and our our outlook i have tried my best to simplify it to the extent possible i have also tried my best to be neutral not get swayed by any particular school of knowledge so or school of philosophy for that matter and in that sense if i have made any errors or mistake i apologize to the gurus guru parampara and also to all of you and i would encourage that each one of us have to figure out our way and the only way to do that is please go through this chapter multiple times it's very very important one of the most important and one of the most critical learnings for spiritual progress and of course ultimately one of the most important and critical learnings for attaining moksha thank you very much hari om shri krishna with this we come to the end of this chapter om tat saditi om tat saditi shrimad bhagavad gita su shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishatsu upanishatsu brahma vidyayam brahma vidyayam yoga shastre yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade shri krishna arjuna samvade kshetra kshetragnya vibhaga yogo nama kshetra kshetragnya vibhaga yogo nama trayodasho dhyayah So we'll repeat the the verses and then we'll go to uh, the sa- sadhanas, right? So, um, we'll repeat to this verses, uh, chapter 13, verse 26 to 34. संजायते किंचित सत्वर जंगम क्षेत्र क्षेत्र संयोगात्तिश्यति स पश्यति समं पश्यन् सर्वत्र तो याति परम गति प्रकृत्य इव च कर्माणि क्रियमाणानि सर्वशः यपश्यति तदात्मानम् अकर्तारम् सपश्यति यदा भूत पृथक् भावम् एकस्तमनुपश्यति तत एव च विस्तारम् ब्रह्म संपद्यति तदा अनादित्वा अनादित्वा निर्गुणत्वा परमात्मायमव्यय शरीरस्थि कौंतेय न कौति न लिप्यते यगत सौक्ष्म्या आकाशम नोपलिप्यते सर्वस्थि देहे तत्मापलिप्यते यकाशयत्येक कृष्णम लोकमिम रवि क्षेत्र क्षेत्री तथा कृष्ण प्रकाशयति भारत क्षेत्र क्षेत्र अंतरम ज्ञानचक्षुषा भूत 
प्रकृति मोक्षम ये विदुर्यांति परम ओम तत्सदिति श्रीमद्भगवद्गीता उपनिषत्सु ब्रह्म विद्यायां योग शास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संवाद क्षेत्र क्षेत्र विभाग योगो नाम so we'll go through the sadhanas that we identified for all chapters uh, once most important if we can't read the entire bhagavad gita at least we should go through the sadhanas so chapter 1 no sadhana really but watch for shoka and moha like arjuna did remove them seek help chapter 2 samatvam yoga uchyate verse 48 maintain equipoise in extremities chapter 3 samachara perform every action with utmost devotion utmost dedication utmost perfection verse 19 chapter 4 verse 18 karmanya karmanya paschet not being the doer while doing by seeing inaction in action chapter 5 padma patram ivam bhasa verse 10 just like a lotus petal is untouched by water be untouched by worldly experiences while being in contact with them chapter 6 verse 30 mam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati sees me everywhere and sees everything in me practice this when in meditation and even otherwise also chapter 7 there are two that we had identified verse 12 natvaham teshu te mai indeed i am not in them they are in me let's maintain awareness of this all the time the pure consciousness untouched in the midst of varied thoughts what did we see in this chapter also and verse 7 mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani ganaiva all the variety is strung in me just like gems in a string or in a mala chapter 8 verse 7 sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yudhya cha at all times every moment of your life remember me and perform your duties chapter 9 yat karoshi tat purushwa madarpanam verse 27 whatever you do you do that as an offering to me bhagwan says he doesn't want anything he doesn't look for anything he doesn't need anything from us whatever we do we do as an offering to him chapter 10 verse 41 yad yad vibhuti mat satvam mama tejom sashambhavam whatever glorious experience is there is a manifestation of a part of the splendor that is me a part of my splendor and chapter 11 nimitta matram bhava be an instrument in his hands take up the role of being an instrument to carry out his plans bhagwan's plans verse 33 and then in chapter 11 itself we had also identified sadhanas for entire bhagavad gita in verse 55 of chapter 11 mat karma krit does actions for me mat paramaha with me as the supreme mat bhaktah always devoted to me sanga varjita free from devoid of attachment and nirvairah sarva bhuteshu without any enmity towards all creatures chapter 12 par upasate dharmyamritam yathoktam in verse 20 follow the immortal dharma as declared by bhagwan shri krishna and then in this chapter last verse chapter 30 uh, verse 34 kshetra kshetra gyor evam antaram viduhu discern the difference between the field and the knower of the field the kshetra and the kshetragya and bhuta prakriti moksham know the means of liberation from prakriti so these are the sadhanas if you notice you will find so many intermingling you know in different ways bhagwan telling us very very similar or actually the same things thank you very much hari om um, let's do bhagavad gita aarti and then conclude om 
should we conclude and then the RP? Huh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. How we did. Yeah. yeah, okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um Asatuma Sadgamaya Tamasuma Jyotir Gamaya Dityodma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyati Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiha Vashishyati Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Gita Aarti Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Maya Jaya Bhagavad Gita Hari Hiya Kamala Vihari Ni Hari Hiya Kamala Vihari Ni Sundar Supreme Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Karma Sumarma Prakashini Kama Sakti Hara Maya Kama Sakti Hara Tattva Jnana Vikashini Tattva Jnana Vikashini Vidya Brahma Para Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Nishchala Bhakti Vidayi Nirmala Malahari Maya Nirmala Malahari Sharana Rahasya Pradayini Sharana Rahasya Pradayini Sabvidhi Sukha Khali Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Raga Tvesha Vidarini Karini Mood Sada Maya Karini Mood Sada Bhava Bhaya Hari Nitarini Bhava Bhaya Hari Nitarini Paramananda Prada Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Asura Bhava Vinashini Nashini Tamarajini Maya Nashini Tamarajini Devi Sadguna Dayini Devi Sadguna Dayini Hari Rasika Sajini Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Samata Tyad Sikhavani Hari Mukha Ki Bani Maya Hari Mukha Ki Bani Sakala Shastra Ki Swamini Sakala Shastra Ki Swamini Shruti Yogi Rani Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Daya Sudha Bhar Sabani Matu Kripa Ki Jai Maya Matu Kripa Ki Jai Hari Pad Prem Daan Kar Hari Pad Prem Daan Kar Apno Kar Li Jai Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Maya Jaya Bhagavad Gita Hari Hiya Kamala Viharini Hari Hiya Kamala Viharini Sundar Supaniti Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Om Jaya Bhagavad Gita Hari Om, thank you. So before we go to uh, thoughts, questions, uh, just a quick thing. I, I'm not there next week. Um, and there is a small chance that the following week also, hopefully that won't happen. Um, you know, hopefully next week will be the only break. Uh, I'll keep you all informed. But there is a small chance that uh, the following week also, I'll, I'll just look at the dates. I'm forgetting the dates. So next week is uh, 
uh, is second and maybe ninth. Uh, hopefully, that will not be the case. Uh, and we'll start chapter 14 after this break. So I'm looking, I'm actually going on a trek. Hopefully, my father's health also permits. He's, he's quite weak. Uh, we managed to get him here, which is uh, you know, a tremendous. So yeah, just pray that everything should go well. And uh, yeah, we resume after this short break. Thank you all. Any thoughts, comments, questions on uh, today's satsang or um, anything else? Rama, Rama, I can see you have switched on. You're saying, trying to say something, but I can't hear. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. I just want to ask you whether I understood today's lesson properly. Uh, uh, just to correct if I've gone wrong in my understanding. Okay. That, uh, see, what happens is that we... No, no, again, your voice has... Uh... We look upon ourselves as a material body. I mean, because of ignorance. Okay. But uh, the real knowledge is when we try to distinguish between the material shetra. That is the field of activity and the spiritual, um, what is it called? Shetragnya, knower of the uh, field. When we know the distinction, then we will not identify ourselves with our material body. Then we will identify with our spiritual nature, which is the soul. And that is the path for enlightenment. Am I right or wrong? Yes, I think you, yes, you put it very correctly. Yes. Thank you. Because it's a tough chapter to understand. So, <coughs> yes, it is. And uh, see, what you have said is the statement, right? When you are, when you, so the chapter teaches us how to. Yeah, that, that, to that's understand. I understood. I mean, yes, chapter that's teaches us, but, yeah. uh, whether I have understood the chapter. So yes, that, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And have a nice trek trip. So. Thank you. Any other thoughts or comments? It is not easy, is it? It's very difficult. I think we take many janmas before we can identify ourselves. It's just not, a, I mean, identifying ourselves as one with the being, with the Almighty, is however much we try. I don't think it's easily possible unless you're a yogi or a jnani or... Yeah, it is possible. It, um, uh, we all have to put that effort. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Kushagra. Oops. One is to understand and then the other is also to follow. That's also very difficult because the the, the, the prakriti keeps pulling you into the various aspects that generate out of qualities. So that also happens so to control, manage and surmount. That's even more difficult. <laughs> so sometimes even knowingly, you still continue the, uh, to get pulled by your fundamental nature to do the way you do. <laughs> True. And ultimately, if you are so knowledgeable, you will not find fault with a, with a person with, with a negative characteristics. You will find him to be as holy as a holy person. Is that? Yeah, in fact, that is, uh, that's true. Yeah, um, the, the ultimate, the realized person sees everyone the same. See, it also relates, right? So, how do we know whether there's no good, bad, ugly? You know, so we we last last satsang or before that we talked about the karmas, right? So, uh, people in this who we experience, whoever we experience now, everyone, including us, are going through our prarabdha. So, uh, 
beyond that prarabdha who they actually are none of us know so for all we know the soul is so highly evolved but in this janma that prarabdha has to be completed there is no choice the only way is to exhaust so they are doing what they have to do otherwise they may be extremely well and the truly knowledgeable person sees that okay if you are a soldier in the army killing the enemy is is okay it's, it's dharma it is not adharma in fact krishna tells arjuna that you have to get up and kill you know you have to do but otherwise if you go and kill somebody it's murder so the, the prarabdha that you have to execute has to be executed so in that sense everyone is good everyone is a good human being okay if no other thoughts or comments thank you all hari om and uh, we'll meet um, i will i'll keep in touch on the group and we will do the next satsang thank you thank you very much thank you thank you it's also an interesting chapter we dwell deeper into the gunas so many times bhagwan has referred to prakriti and the gunas right so that's what we uh, dive into in the next chapter thank you all hari om <laughs>